All right, YouTube, today we are going to be assembling a computer, and I am going to show you how I do it. Um, a lot of people do it different ways. Uh, I haven't done one in a while, so it was a learning experience, but I'm going to go through the uh, part selection right now. If anybody has been following computer stuff lately, you'd know that between like 20... I don't know, between 2012, really, between 2012 and 2017, there was pretty much no innovation on uh, PCs, uh, especially the processors. Uh, my aunt's been wanting a computer, and I said, hey, wait, just wait, we've got to be patient. But now with AMD Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 9 and the Threadripper, uh, AMD switching to 7 nanometer, it is time. I buy all my parts on Black Friday, okay? Uh, the reason you do this is because everything's a lot cheaper on Black Friday. I do not advise anybody to buy like one part one month, another part another month. When you build a computer, you need to buy all the parts all at one time because if you buy something and you don't build your computer for eight months later, well, or six months later, guess what? Your warranties are expired, okay? First thing I look at is the processor. Some people do it differently. That's the first thing I look at. I know what processor I want to buy, okay? I wanted the AMD Ryzen 7 3800X. Um, you get the 7 nanometers, all right? 7 nanometer technology uses a lot less power. We got that. 8 cores, 16 threads. The next thing I do is after I know what processor I'm going to buy, I, buy, I look at the motherboard, and I usually shop on Newegg. Even though sometimes Amazon has a slightly better deal, the Newegg site is just too good. I mean, you got reviews, you got people that know what they're talking about, and it's easy to find the parts. Also, when you're browsing on Newegg, make sure you click Newegg only, not the other sellers when you're buying, when you want brand name parts, okay? If you want cheap Chinese stuff, you know, go ahead and put whatever. I look for motherboard. Now you must get compatible. This is socket AM4, I believe. So you get an AM4 socket motherboard. When looking at the motherboard, I look at the reviews. Make sure, you know, it's got four stars and up. And this motherboard had the best reviews. People were sturdy, you know, sturdy and all that stuff. And when I took this out of the box, man, that thing was nice and stiff and sturdy. And I highly recommend this motherboard. Uh, but it costs a pretty penny, okay? But you know what? You'll never, you never have to mess with it again. Nowadays, make sure you get that M2 slot for, mem uh, for your hard drive. After the motherboard, next thing I get is the... RAM, okay? You have to check your motherboard. You go on the motherboard website that you pick and it says which memory is compatible. And a lot of times, what I did is I kind of cheated because I was like going through and they were all ex super expensive memories. So then I went in and I just looked at the reviews and some of the reviewers put what they built and what goes with it. One of the reviewers said they picked this Trident Z Neo and it worked, so that's what I went for. Now, your processor says on the box, it says the max RAM speed. I believe this one is 3200, DDR4 3200, max speed. So you don't want to go and waste a bunch of money on DDR4 4000, you know. It's too fast. It won't even run at that speed. You're wasting money. So I bought DDR4. This should say this is 3600, but it was on sale. Next thing you do is you buy your hard drive. All right, your hard drive has got to be, this is the probably, I wanna say it's the most important thing, okay? I really do because everything, all your data is stored on your hard drive and that's where it all starts. When you boot up, it has to take everything from here. When you boot up a game, it's gotta take everything from here. When you start a program, you can have the fastest RAM in the world but if you have a slow hard drive, guess what? It's got to take it from the hard drive to put it on the RAM, okay? So, fast hard drive. I went with the uh, VNAN 970 EVO Plus Samsung, okay? And this is the M2, okay? 
This is the first time I'm using one of these, um, and they are insanely fast, okay? Uh, the, for example, the SATA 4, the SATA 6 cables that are on the motherboard, those do like, stop at 600 megabytes a second, okay? The M970 EVO Plus is like 3,000 megabytes a second. Next thing I do is I get the graphics card. Radeon RX 570, uh, it is, I mean it's up there. And it was 130 bucks. So this is definitely the best budget. I wouldn't spend, I wouldn't go lower than this, all right? Because you wouldn't be able to play many games. Uh, and it's just a solid all around card. So that's what I went with. Um, if you do a lot more gaming, you'll probably splurge. A lot higher, probably go with the, um, I'd go with the, if I wanted to go higher, I'd go with the NVIDIA. All you want to do when you're selecting the power supply is one, I look at the reviews. I usually go a modular or full modular, nothing less, okay, because sometimes the cables are kind of short, all right. When you're, uh, let's say you're building a computer and you have a power supply and keep this box, all right. For the life of your power supply and keep the cables that come with this in the box some people accidentally fry their computer because they mix and match these cables so these cables do not try to use these with any other power supply only keep them here even if it's the same brand i wouldn't even mess with it you know it's not worth the risk you take your wattage of everything and you add it all up Okay, if you have two graphics cards, which I really don't recommend doing, um, I used to think uh, Crossfire was the way to go. It's not. It never runs perfect, never has, never will, okay? Just get one high-end card and keep it for two years and then sell it on eBay, buy a new card, all right? That, I think that's the best way to do it. Get like a bronze and hot or higher power supply. CD drive, I went with the Zeus. Um, it was the best bank, it was not the best bank for the buck. It was the most reliable for the buck. Another thing I went with on this build was a front panel, all right? We have USBs, 3.0, SATA. We have micro SD. This really helps, you know, just to have access right there. Front panel, don't have to mess with anything like that. I couldn't find one at a deal. Last Black Friday, I got the Roswell, and that one did me good. Never had a problem with that one, but it was not on sale this year. It was like twice the price of last year, so I wouldn't be I'm taking a chance on this. It's The brand is Easy DIY. I don't know. We'll see how it works when I set it all up. The last thing I pick is the tower. Now you may be wondering why this tower? Um, lots of, whoa, what is that? I go no smaller than a mid tower. They specifically told me they wanted a full tower. This is very sturdy and well made. I can't even unscrew this with my fingers right now. I need to get a screwdriver. I wanted two fans and then some slots here because we're going to have our hard drive and we're going to have those other uh, USBs. And there are some USBs here uh, that we're also going to be using and a microphone. A big case like this is really nice is because you have a lot of room. Get the power supply mounted on the bottom. Everything is just nice and clean. You got the weight on the bottom. You don't have all that weight at the top. You know, less chance of it to fall over. And then the third reason is the most important reason is this case was super cheap. You could easily spend $200, $300 on a case, all right? This was on sale, and it had an added bonus of having a nice uh, side panel. When you do a nice, clean design, you want to have a side panel, and you want to see that design. And if you could go water cooling, you know, I'm not a fan. I've heard stories about people's water coolers leaking. Destroying their whole computer, that's not worth it in my opinion, okay? I, I ain't rich, I don't have a bunch of money to spend, so I'm not going to mess around with water cooling. 
All right, we're gonna start building this thing now, or assembling it. Lay down a piece of cardboard so you don't uh, scratch up your table there. That's not from computers, that's from kids, but. Help distribute the load from all these um, soldering joints and stuff. You don't wanna mess with that. Remove stickers. Now, you could get an anti-static strap. All right, so I got my anti-static strap, but my kids were playing with it, so this is all I have, so that doesn't work. If it's winter time, do not wear wool or, you know, wool pants or something so you don't shock this, okay? We're gonna get these stickers, all these stickers off of here. Always consult the manual before you do anything, and always save this. When you build a computer, Put your manuals and CDs. I put them all in the tower box and I keep everything there. Looking at the motherboard here, I'm going to be installing the SSD first uh, before I do that because I don't want this getting in the way, the processor getting in the way. So we're going to go with that. Now, I consulted the manual. And it doesn't say anything about any of these slots having any kind of particular preference or order. I already read the instructions here. You kind of install it at a 30 degree angle, which I don't know what 30 degrees is, but just push it, slide it in, and then let it go down. Then I'm going to take this little plate here. Two fingers. Two finger, snug, and that is it. Okay, you don't want to strip any screws or anything, all right? So this plate is now protecting that hard drive, or yeah, the hard drive, so that's, that's really nice to have. And we're not gonna be using these other ones. All right, the next thing we're going to install is the processor and the heat sink. I'm gonna slide this over like this so you can see how I prep, all right? Now, you want this ex exposed is to as little dust as possible, preferably no dust, so you get everything ready. All right, I have my heat sink here, still in the package. This I can take that off. And you want to kind of line it up how it's going to go when you set it down, all right? You can look, while keeping this on and unexposed to dust, you can see they already have a thermal compound applied. I was on the fence about whether or not to use my own thermal compound or to go with what they had. Um, a lot of people use Arctic Silver 5. I'm going to go ahead and use the stock as to keep all the warranty intact on this, the stock thermal compound. There's going to be no overclocking of this either. Look at the back here. There was a little uh, corner here. That corner is going to match the corner on here. Looking at my cooler, I want that lined up too. You see how it's got these snappies here and here. Those are going to snap right in to this stock um, cooler mounts. Okay. What's, that's also nice about using the stock coolers. You don't have to unscrew these mounts and put a new mounts in and all that stuff. It's when you open this package, do not touch the top. It's like a CD. You know, if you know how to do the CD thing. Or if you're using CD discs, you don't put your fingers like this, you put your fingers on the side. See how it gets right in there? Kind of push, make sure it's in. This will lock in place. Let me get the cooler. This is already lined up. Okay, let me spin this around. So it snaps here and here. Now we take this handle. This one was really tough to do. 
going to be installing memory now, and it's always good to, again, you consult the manual because every motherboard is different. So I went and turned to the memory page, and since we have two sticks of RAM, we're going to do DIMM A2 and DIMM B2, which is this one and this one. So we're going to open up those. All right, there it is. There it is. Clicks right in. Push. Clicks right in. We're going to be installing the motherboard onto into here. And we have to look and see make sure that we have all these uh, screws are in the proper place. See, we're missing a couple. So this is like really set up right now for a micro or yeah, micro ATX. We're going to screw the proper ones. Screw them all into the proper place. Okay, so I totally missed setting this in here. I thought I was recording, but apparently I wasn't. All right, so I just slowly lowered it in. Now we take the screws, these little circles. If I remember correctly, let's try one out. Screw it in. Two finger. Now keep them kind of loose so you can slide this thing around. And then you go back through. Alright, so that was the right screw. And just go through each one. Now notice I'm touching my case before my fingers go down. Now you can tell where these screws go. The motherboard is marked. Now it'd be nice to have a magnetized screwdriver. I do not. I kind of reverse it and then go through the forwards. I went ahead and screwed in all the motherboard screws I could find and I went ahead and two finger tightened all of them stuff there and then there's this here alright so we'll take all these out so if you're gonna be installing stuff these are pop-outs just twist them to pop them out. And let's hope this can install from the front. And it can. That looks pretty good like that. Here's access to the screws on this side. Use the fine threaded screws, machines. We're more like machine screws. So. Remember, two finger tighten all this stuff. Let's see how it looks from the front. Nice and flush. Excellent. Well, I have three screws on this side and two screws on the other side. I'm not sure what the best practices are for how many screws you need. But I've done it, just two screws on each side. It's worked out just perfect. The next piece of hardware that I will be installing is this front panel. Came with four screws. I put a super, I put a neodymium magnet on the screwdriver and now it's magnetized. On this side, just this plastic piece. Okay, I ripped that right off. That's good. I don't know what the point of these things are. I don't know if they think that that's somehow going to hold. I'm thinking about just ripping them all off. But now it's going to let me screw the screw in.
next thing we're installing is the graphics card. These have to go. We're going to push that down because when we push it down, it's going to snap up in place. So push that down. When we press this into place, we're not going to be pressing on the heatsink shroud. We're going to be pressing on the card itself. There it is. Snapped into place. Now we're going to connect the screws that we're missing. Next thing we're going to install is the power supply. I got just about everything hooked up and I then did my cable management. One wire at a time and I connected them all like with these ties. On here I kind of tied these together. You just want to prevent any kind of airflow obstruction with bunching the cables together as best you can. Um, all those cables that were coming from up here, there's uh, USB and all that stuff. I routed them out the back. The biggest benefit to having a nice large full-size case is that you have room to run your cables in the through the back. First I tie up all the power like the fan cases because those aren't going to move you know when you move components and stuff you'll have to move this other stuff so the next thing I would probably tie down is like the big the big stuff that ain't going to move and then I'd go through with all these other cables on top of that here comes the moment of truth finally turning on the computer I have my motherboard thing there find the power button I think this is it and let's try to turn on the monitor. That's a VGA. HDMI 1, HDMI 2. Okay, there's a... Let's see what this says. Please enter setup to configure your system. F1 to run setup. Installing drivers and utilities. So I think this is the proper order to do everything. So the first thing we have to do is install Windows. I went ahead and downloaded Windows on a flash drive. Windows setup. Next, install now. I'm installing Windows. I'm going to select, I don't have a product key because I'm using, I'm going to install it, but enter the activation key later. Pretty sure it's Windows 10 Home. Okay, I selected the drive. That's the M2 mm. flash drive. I disconnected all the other drives that I'm going to put, or I didn't connect them, just so I know that, hey, that's the only drive that I'm going to be putting it on. We got region, US, yes. Keyboard layout, yeah, sure, US. Want to add a second keyboard? Skip. Click on don't have internet because we have to do the drivers. Continue with limited setup. No password right now. Cortana, I guess I'll accept for now. I'll just keep this at default. Go back and mess with that. Okay. We're in Windows now. Next is drivers. Insert MSI driver disk into the optical drive. Ooh, I wonder if they didn't have an optical drive. 
just right click this forget how you run it it's opening it oh DVD setup right here yes Okay, Google Chrome, Google Drive. We're not going to install G Google Drive. MSI wallpaper. And we're not going to do the Norton. I'm going to Google MSI wallpaper. It's always good to go through this stuff to see if it's junk. I'm going to go ahead and click the install button here. Oh, wait a minute. Dretz drivers. Let's see utilities. Okay, before we do any utilities, we're going to just do drivers. I'm going to make sure this stuff is still unclicked. We're going to click install on these. And now it should just go through, and a lot of times the software will just go through and then install all the drivers. Um, on other ones, you have to click each one one by one and restart the computer a million times. Um, I think it, they've gotten better where it'll do it all, but I'm not going to have you watch this. You just click install and then you go walk away and come back. The manual wants me to install the utilities. So we'll go to the utilities tab. Um, I did have to restart it a couple times. Now we're going to figure out what kind of utilities I need. I just did a bunch of research and I decided against installing the Dragon Center software. I heard it's really buggy, doesn't work good. Uh, same thing with the gaming OSD. Uh, that's just like changing your screen colors every time you game. I don't know, that's just not something that I care about. And then another thing is the MSI display kit. That's another thing where it just changes your monitor colors. Um, this person isn't going to be using that. It's just more bloatware. I don't like bloatware. Uh, one thing I found interesting, I do like 7-Zip. The MSI CPU-Z Gaming. Um, I'm going to install that because you get to see your hardware stats live. Uh, then I don't have to go search for another program to do that. And I'm hoping it has temperature on there. And another thing I'm going to install is this MSI app player. Um, it allows you to put Android apps on your computer. So that's something pretty cool that I think might be useful. So those are the things that I'm going to be installing out of the utilities. I still have to install the graphics card. And it came with this card where I have to go online. I just connected to the internet through the wireless uh, router, the built-in wireless. Radeon 500 series. Or 276, so it's this one. So you can enter in the product part number Support. I want drivers. What the heck? Okay. Click the driver here. Oh, okay. Here we go. From what I see, the software adrenaline is something that could be useful. So we're going to we'll run it. And that'll probably take a while to download. I ended up getting the Radeon software installed. It's a bunch of gaming stuff. Uh, this person probably won't use it much, but it's good to have, I guess, for like HDMI scaling is very important.
to have. For the memory, I finally figured it out. You go to settings, overclock, and you scroll down to DRAM. DRAM voltage, 1.376. I don't know why it's higher and you set the voltage here and what I looked at is I looked on the box here of the DRAM voltage and it says I don't know if you can focus 1.35 volts so that's what I put set this at and this box also says it's 3600 speed but the processor can only handle 3200 DDR4 3200 and this is 3600 so I had to go up here where the DRAM frequency are is and I just scrolled down the list and put DDR4 3200 and I left everything else to auto because I don't know what all that stuff does sometimes it's better just to not mess with it oh yeah and after you set this voltage for the RAM you just press Usually it tells you in the motherboard, but this one is F10 to save and exit. So that's, I've not made any changes because I did that earlier. But you save the changes and then boot to the desktop. One way to check if your RAM is working, your memory is working right, is to just go to use CPU-Z and right there, you just multiply that by 2 and that's about 3200 there. So that's how you know that it is working properly. I finally have the computer all up and running smoothly. All the drivers work, everything. And now I'm going to run you through everything that I did to make sure it was running smoothly. And then I did have a couple of problems that I encountered. And I'll just hurry up and do a quick run through of how I solve those problems too. Here is my little checklist. If you want to make an exact replica of this che checklist, feel free to do so. Um, I did uh, not include a couple things. Okay, so the first thing I did was I checked the BIOS version and build date. Okay, it was that date. Um, if you're buying a new motherboard with new chips, new-ish, you're probably going to want to upgrade the BIOS. If you're getting older data, older hardware, you usually don't, but I updated the BIOS. Don't be afraid to update the BIOS, okay? So this this BIOS update allowed me to... It had a slightly quicker motherboard boot-up time, which helps Windows load faster. Checked headphones and microphone inputs. To get the sound working properly, properly, I had to install this Nehemic third-party software, and I hate doing that. I was trying my best to get it to work without it, and I could not do it. So that this motherboard makes you install this Nehemic, and that made everything work properly. Check all USB slots. So I went through with a micro SD card. Well, not a micro SD, but yeah, just a USB stick with data on it. And I stuck it into every slot to make sure that it works. The next thing I did was I checked the wireless speed. And we got pretty good speeds there. And then I checked the cable connection speed to make sure I had good speed there. I just went to like speedtest.net to do that. I checked the micro SD and SD card slots. Uh, there's a bunch of other cards that are in that port, but in that expansion slot, but those are the only cards that I had, so those, those worked. Set proper memory, speed, and voltage. Okay, so I went back into the BIOS. Which the first time I built it, I had to manually set it, but the second time I reset it, after I updated the BIOS, it automatically detected the proper memory speed. So that's a good thing, but always double check that because you don't want to be running your memory slower than what you could be. Then, before I stress tested, I have a game that I got for free with this. So I played the game for a while on this computer. So that just to make sure that you want to make sure that your heat sink and all that stuff is properly um, 
embedded in there so you don't want to go too high of, you don't want your computer to get too high of a temperature so to do that I used HW monitor yes so HW monitor gives you the temperatures and voltages of everything on your computer so I turn that on right when I turn on the computer I turn on HW monitor and then the first thing I did was I played a game for a while to make sure to check the max temp and playing the game even on max settings I was playing uh, the outer worlds uh, it didn't get too hot you know you don't want it's like when you stress test you go straight to a hundred CPU and you can burn out something if you're not the heat sink ain't connected properly because it takes like a little bit so you need to slowly ramp up that CPU usage before you do an all-out Prime 95 test. So play a game or something for a while, as demanding of a game as you can find, with ultra settings. So do that first. The next thing I did, and this is all free stuff. Oh, come on. So I played the game for a while, then I stress tested. First I did Prime 95, and then I used the OCCT, and then I did Furmark. So these are all stress testing, uh, like uh, Prime 95 kind of does memory and CPU, OCCT does a little bit of the same thing. Furmark is your graphics card. And then Addo Disk Benchmark, I did afterwards to test your hard drive. Because sometimes if you get a hard drive and you don't test it, you don't know, you don't really know if it's running a little slower with these speeds. I know it's running at the exact speed it's supposed to be, actually a little faster. So those are the benchmarks that you run. Oh, and the amount of time I ran. I ran um, Prime 95 for a couple hours. Uh, OCCT, I ran for about eight hours. And Furmark, I ran for about three or four hours. I don't really know. Some people say you want to do it overnight or whatever. I don't know. I, they, they say they find the errors pretty fast. And you know what? This thing ain't going to run at 100 you know, percent load, this computer. But, I guess it doesn't hurt. I don't really feel good about something running at 100% overnight. I hope I helped anybody out there who's thinking about building a new computer. Uh, it's pretty satisfying and it helps you troubleshoot things when uh, they go wrong. And building a computer is, I find, much cheaper than trying to order one. If this helped you out, please give me the like button and subscribe. If you, you know, I'm sure I did some things wrong. So if I did something wrong or if I forgot any kind of tests that I should do, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I kind of do this as a hobby, so I'm not the uh, absolute pro. So uh, please like and subscribe that this helped you out.